so once again thank you so much guys for joining and i'll be dealing with the topic the reason why god demanded for blood before forgiveness of sin and i know tonight a lot of us are going to be blessed so i pray that you just open your you just make you just open up your hearts to receive this powerful message so why does God really need blood before he can forgive our sin if God is God and we say he's a good God and he's a loving father and he's pure and holy why does God really need blood before he can forgive sin and I know this is a question most of the time you know we face out there people ask does God really drink blood does he really need blood before he can forgive human sin sin that he can forgive he really demanded for blood before he can forgive our sin so like I said the reason why God demanded for blood before forgiveness of our sin is the topic tonight but before I answer that question we are going straight to the Bible to learn about uh, about forgiveness of sin by the law we are going to like i said we are going to deal with the topic of forgiveness by sin by the law under the law how sin was forgiven and under grace how sin was also forgiven and then in conclusion of this message we are going to see why did god need blood before he can forgive our sin did God, people ask question, uh, does God really drink blood? A person who is love, a person who is full of holiness, a person who is kind. I mean, how can a loving father, a father of light, be murdered for blood before he forgives sin? So, first of all, we are going to deal with the topic, forgiveness by, by the law. Then we're going to jump by forgiveness by grace. Then we will end up in that topic that topic and we get the answer so that this will help you you see the reason why these messages are coming is to help you to understand what Jesus Christ did on the cross for us because most people are like they still don't understand people know about Jesus died for us but they don't know the details of what he died for and most of us our mind has been corrupted thinking to be a christian simply mean a way of getting things like getting natural things to be normal for us. that's why we can't understand the value of the finished work so i want you to be with your bible so take your bible with you because we are going to read a lot for you to confirm because i know most of us still uh, today i encountered a friend who said i believe in your message your messages are so powerful but there's one message you preach that i find it very difficult to accept and that is the topic on sin is dead and i told the person don't worry just get try and get the book and go through it you understand what it means sin is dead i probably don't preach sin is dead because it sounds good i preach it because the bible opened my eye to understand what jesus christ did on the cross for me and that's the reason why today i preach what i preach because of what jesus did so take your bible with me and we are going to study through the bible i'm not going to say things without the scriptures we're going to use the scriptures through old testament and we'll learn in the new testament to understand what the work of jesus mean so forgiveness by law is a topic we'll be dealing with first so first of all what is forgiveness of sin according to the bible what is forgiveness of sin according to the bible before jesus christ uh, came into the world and died forgiveness was actually a practice or a personal uh, thing done under the law under the law they were actually commanded to bring offering for sin to, to be forgiven under the law they were commanded to bring what 
a sacrifice of animals for sins to be forgiven by God according to the Bible and we'll read that throughout so you can see that in the Old Testament the people were instructed to bring lamb and after they bring lamb according to the scripture they will lay their hands on the herd of the blameless lamb now excuse me to say not any lamb but a blameless lamb they will lay their hands on the head of the lamb and they will bring the lamb to the prince and then the prince will kill the lamb or will slaughter the lamb and there they go and say their sins are forgiven. So their sins which has to do with either wrongdoing or whatever it is were all forgiven by the sacrifices of blameless lambs or bulls or flocks. The Bible says, if you don't have uh, flocks or lambs, bring fowls or dove or whatever it is, until you have that kind of an animal, your sins are not going to be forgiven, according to the scriptures. So, it means their forgiveness is in the blood of the lamb being slaughtered. So the Bible says, with all the sacrifice of blood, they will not be forgiven. Now, my reader, open to Hebrew chapter number 9, verse 22. Hebrew chapter number 9, verse 22. And we are looking to, into forgiveness that comes by the law. How was forgiveness done according to the Bible? And that's what we are going to look into throughout. So open to the book of Hebrew chapter number 9, verse 22, and read it for me. Forgiveness that comes by the law. And I want you guys to just take your Bible and check through everything that we are going to study because I want us to understand what does it mean Jesus forgive you. And I said under the law, before someone can be forgiven, he need a blameless lamb. And according to the Bible, the lamb will be kept for a certain days to check whether truly is the lamb was blameless. Before that lamb will be sacrificed to clear or for the person to be forgiven of sin, that lamb will be kept for several uh, some times or some days to check out whether the lamb was blameless or not. And once the lamb is blameless, the lamb, the person will lay his hand on the head of the lamb. They will slaughter the lamb. Uh, sorry, the lamb. Then the person's sin is forgiven in the blood of the lamb. So let's. The Bible says, without the blood, there is no forgiveness according to the law. According to the law. So uh, read Hebrews nine twenty two. In fact, under the law, almost everything is cleansed with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Like Neither that. really. That's it. Thank you so much. In fact, under the law, everything is put with blood. And without what? A shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. This is so clear. It is in the Bible. Okay? So, their forgiveness came by the sacrifices of bulls and goats and so on. Their forgiveness did not come just by empty words like today. They will say, oh, just go to God and just please say, you are sorry for what you did. You are so sorry. It did not work that way. He said, almost all things by the law were done by blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of their sin. So their sins were forgiven by the sacrifices of lamb. Like I said, we will just, before you know the reason why God demanded blood, there is a reason behind it. It's not like God was the one who needed the blood. If it had to do with God alone, he would have left human to live freely, but there is something behind. And we'll get there. Why blood was demanded for forgiveness. Okay, so we have seen that your forgiveness were done according to 
the sacrifices of of lamb so uh please go to leviticus chapter one Leviticus chapter 1 and you can see that people who argue that Christ has cleared our sin make their argument outside the Bible because everything they talk about is not according to the scriptures they just say when somebody did something wrong the person needs to go to God and say I'm sorry but that is not according to the scripture but because by the scripture forgiveness of sin is done according to the sacrifice Blood must be poor first before you will be forgiven. If you don't have blood, you are not going to be forgiven. According to the book of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22. He said no blood equal to no forgiveness. So those things mean that when you do something, you need to go to God and say you are sorry. It does not work according to the kingdom principle. Under the law, every forgiveness it has been given by the sacrifices of lambs that is under the law and we are not under the law but i'm using them so that we can come into our stage so go to leviticus chapter number one and read it from verse one to nine leviticus one verse one to nine and let us all open a bible or on the floor whatever we are to understand everything and i encourage you to read the book of leviticus the whole book to understand how sin were forgiven by the law because until we understand that we will not stop insulting the work of christ on the cross so read leviticus chapter 1 verse 1 to 9 the lord called to moses and spoke to him from the tent of meeting saying Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When any one of you brings an offering to the Lord, you shall bring your offering of domestic animals from the herd or from the flock. If his offering is a burnt offering from the herd, he shall offer a male without blemish. He shall offer it at the doorway of the tent of meeting so that he may be accepted before the Lord. He shall lay his hand on the head of the burnt offering transferring symbolically his guilt to the sacrifice that it may be accepted for him to make atonement on his behalf he shall kill the young bull before the lord and aaron's sons the priest shall present the blood and sprinkle the blood around on the altar that is at the doorway of the tent of meeting then he shall skin the burnt offering and cut it into pieces the sons of aaron the high priest shall put fire on the altar of burnt offering and arrange wood on the fire. Then Aaron's son, the priest, shall arrange the pieces, the head and the fat, on the wood which is on the fire that is on the altar. But he shall wash its entrails and its legs with water. The priest shall offer all, all of it up in smoke on the altar as a burnt offering. It is an offering by fire a sweet and soothing aroma to the lord amen so you can see what i was saying is the details leviticus chapter one is telling you how sacrifices of sin were done under the law no lamb equal to no forgiveness before somebody can be forgiven to experience blessing he first must sacrifice the lamb as a way of his escape so the lamb took away the person's guilt okay then now take note very carefully here because it's very important under the law the lamb was not able to take away the sin the lamb only covered them for a period of time which has an expiring date and the bible call it year by year why because they are seen still stand by just that the lamb was able to cover them for a period of time so their forgiveness came by the sacrifices of what a blameless lambs or animals unto god and like i said there is no forgiveness without sacrifice even the prince chosen by god the anointed one also was commanded to bring sacrifices unto God anytime he also sinned. So even the prince, anytime, it doesn't matter whether he's prince, whether he was choosing or whatever it is, 
the Bible says, anytime the priest himself sin, he must sacrifice a lamb. That has to tell you that their forgiveness were, were all fine. They were, they were forgiven in the blood. Their forgiveness, their forgiveness was found in blood. No blood, no forgiveness. And no forgiveness equal to curse. So let's let's read uh, Leviticus chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. The prince himself also need a lamb to be forgiven. So if we don't understand the content of what Christ did on the cross, because until you understand how sin were forgiven and that the new you can never accept. Even the, the old how sin were forgiving under the old you can never accept what happened in the new and that's why most of us are insulting the lord jesus christ and still saying there are so many people who are seen and their sin will be forgiven if you think there are some that are not forgiving yet and now before they'll be forgiven then you need to get the people lamb if you don't accept that all of them they are being forgiven in the one blood jesus christ then you need to give them lamb to present to the father before they will be accepted so like i said even the priest himself need to sacrifice lamb so let's read leviticus chapter 4 verse 3 and 4. if the anointed priest sins bringing guilt on the people then he shall offer to the lord a young bull without blemish as a sin offering for the sin he has committed he shall bring the bull to the doorway of the tent of meeting before the lord and shall lay his hand on the bull's head transferring symbolically his guilt to the sacrifice and kill the bull before the lord amen it doesn't matter who they are as long as all of them are human beings doesn't matter whether they are anointed or what so he said if even the prince if he's seen he also must sacrifices must sacrifice a lamb why because his forgiveness is in the blood his forgiveness doesn't come just because god is love his forgiveness will not come just because he was chosen as a prince to take care of the people or to lead the people everyone's forgiveness was in the lamb so throughout the bible forgiveness came only by blood and not by confession because like i said there are so many people they they always put you in this sin consciousness telling you that anytime you did you you have done something wrong you need to go to god to confess it it is in it is not scriptural forgiveness is done only by the sacrifice or only in blood there is no such thing as go and confess your sin unto god before sin can be forgiven according to the bible there need to be a blood so that was how sin was forgiven by the law by the law that's how sin was forgiven under the law now let's quickly move and the grace how our sin was forgiven and take note under grace under the law they must look for the alarm under the law they must you must look for your lamb and you must make sure the lamb is blameless you must make sure that the lamb is blameless and the lamb will be will, the, 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 the lamb will be kept for some days so that they will, the priest will check whether the, the lamb you 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 have you have the person brought has a problem or not. When the lamb doesn't have any problem, then the, the, they, they will allow the, the the guilty sinner to place his hand on the lamb, and then they will slaughter the lamb, and then the blood of the lamb to uh, uh, bring the forgiveness of the person. So under the law, they need to set for their own lamb. A blameless lamb but under the grace there there is only one lamb that was provided by the creator of the universe under the grace the lamb is for everyone because this lamb is not provided by man this lamb is not provided by you that you say oh this is my lamb this is my own lamb that is going to take my sin under grace the lamb uh, the lamb was uh, provided by God himself. That's what the Bible, John, so when John saw Jesus, he said, Behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the whole world. You know, God 
is for everyone so he provided the lamb for everyone so under grace the lamb was provided by the creator of the universe and that's why i'm telling you that the creator of the universe doesn't need blood everything he did he did it for you he did everything for you and there is a reason why blood was demanded there is nothing that can be done for you to be free except blood and there is a reason behind it so under grace you can see the love of god he provided the lamb and this lamb is for everyone so john when he saw jesus christ in john uh, uh, john chapter 129 said behold the lamb of god who takes away the sin of the world so you can see that the lamb of god is different from the lamb being sacrificed under the old testament this lamb of god does not only come to to be sacrificed unto you but he came actually to take away sin once and for all that's why the lamb and the grace the sacrifice is done once because he took the whole sin by itself away that's why it was not the lamb of god is not being sacrificed every year like that is of the old and that the law they sacrifice every yearly because their sacrifice were temporary it covered them for year but under grace, the Lamb of God did not was was not just sacrificed for you. He did not. He was. He didn't just die for you. He took sin. He took sin once for all. And this is the reason why under grace, the Lamb of God, the sacrifice was done once for all time. Now I'll uh, read Hebrew chapter number one, ten, Hebrew chapter, Hebrew chapter ten, verse one to three. Sorry, Hebrew chapter ten, verse one to four. The Lamb of God under grace. The Lamb of God under grace. Let's see what he did in, in Hebrew chapter number ten, one to four. For since the law has only a shadow just a pale representation of the good things to come not the very image of those things it can never by offering the same sacrifices continually year after year make perfect for those who approach its altars for if it were otherwise would not these sacrifices have stopped being offered for the worshippers having once for all time been cleansed will no longer have a consciousness of sin but as it is, these continual sacrifices bring a fresh reminder of sins to be atoned for year after year. For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sin. You see that? You understand what he said? He said, for the law is the shadow. Everything they, they, were, they were doing, the animal sacrifice, they were shadow communicating to us about the coming of the Lamb of God. They were shadow communicating uh, to us about the Lamb of God. Then look at what he said. He said, For the Lord having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things. Because everything they were doing under the law is not the, the actual fact or the actual truth or the actual representation of Jesus Christ. That could not take away the sin. And he said, he said, can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the comments there unto perfect. It could not make them perfect. It only covered them for a period of time. And then verse 2, he asked you a question. He said, for then would they not have ceased to be doing sacrifices? Because that the worshiper once perished should have no more conscious of sin. If those sacrifices were effective, the consciousness of sin shouldn't be there anymore. That's what the book of Hebrews is talking to you about. If their sacrifices were effective enough, there should no longer be the consciousness of sin. So in other words, if you are under grace after what Jesus Christ has done for you, you are still having that consciousness of sin it means the death of jesus is not different from that of what they were doing under the law and that was an insult to the spirit of christ 
it is an insult to say the Lamb of God could not fully take away the sin of the world. And if he did not, or he failed to take away the sin of the world, it means he, he is not different from that of the Lamb. Bulls. It's not different from what was going on under the law. And it says under the law, those sacrifices, they are in, it is impossible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. Do you understand what it means here? The focus is that sin should be taken away. Not blood should be covering us. The focus is that God focus is that the actual sin should be taken away. Once sin is taken away, then that consciousness of sin and that consciousness of continually sacrificing uh, blood animals to be taking sins, to be taking, to be covering them year by year will stop. But because their sacrifices could not take away sin, it only covered them for a period of time, but then they have to go back to do it. But this one, Jesus Christ, has, when he came, he did not only die for you, he uprooted the root of the problem. This is the reason why it is an insult for you to still have the consciousness of sin. So they kept, under the law, they kept on making those sacrifices for sins every year. And the Bible said it could not take away their sins. Rather, their sacrifices kept on awaking in them the consciousness of sin. And he said, because the bulls and the goats could not take away their sin because the focus is the sin should be taken away not just the sacrifice the main problem must need it it must be uprooted so like i said god's focus was that sin should be taken away but under the law or in their case upon all the sacrifices made their sin still stand before god and the reason is because the sacrifices under the law were too weak to take away sin. Our focus is that sin should be taken away, not just the sacrifice. Their problem must be uprooted because God did not create sin. So if God didn't create sin, then sin must be uprooted. That is the focus. If sin is not uprooted, everything, every sacrifice is being made there is useless. So they did all the sacrifices all right, but they lack transformation of life so that they can stop repeating their sins and evil act. Why? Because sin was alive and it had power over them. So no matter their sacrifices, their sins still stand before God. And then the Lord God then became tired of all those animal sacrifices and, and he was tired and, and he was tired and then he shouted, you know what, I'm tired of your sacrifices. Why? Because God needed obedience and life transformation from them, not just sacrifices upon sacrifices. So he then spoke to Isaiah. Go to Isaiah chapter number one, verse 10 to um to 19. Isaiah chapter number one, verse 10 to 90. So you can see that God was tired of the sacrifices because the key was sin should be taken away. Not just sacrifices. The key is that sin should be taken away. This is the reason why the Lamb of God came. So read Isaiah chapter 1 verse 10 to 19. Hear the word of the Lord rulers of Jerusalem you rulers of another Sodom listen to the law and instruction of our God you people of another Gomorrah, what are your multiplied sacrifices to me without your repentance? Says the Lord. I have had enough of your burnt offerings of rams and the fat of well fed cattle without your obedience, and I take no pleasure in the blood of bulls or lambs of goats offered without repentance. When you come to appear before me, who requires this of you? This trampling of my temple caught by your sinful feet? Do not bring worthless offerings again. Your incense is repulsive to me. Your new moon and Sabbath observances 
the calling of assemblies, I cannot endure wickedness. You are seeing your injustice, your wrongdoing, and the squalor of the festive assembly. I hate the hypocrisy of your new moon, festivals, and your appointed feasts. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing so, them. So, when you spread out your hands in prayer, pleading for my help, I will hide my eyes from you. Yes, even though you offer many prayers, I will not be listening. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Get your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rebuke the ruthless. Defend the fatherless. Plead for the rights of the widow in court. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the best of the land. Amen. So you can see throughout the prophecy that came through Isaiah, you can see that God is not interested in blood. Blood is something he can't stand it. You understand? So here you can see that everything that God was trying to do is that these people get a life of transformation. But it is impossible because of sin. So you can see at the end of all the prophecy, God promised to cleanse their sin and they'll be white as snow. And that promise, that promise is a prophecy about the coming of Jesus Christ. And the book of Hebrew also makes the same references of what Isaiah said under the uh, inspiration of the Spirit that God did not find pleasure in the sacrifices made under the law. That has to tell you that he's not uh, somebody who loves to drink blood to, before uh, he can forgive your sins. So all those sacrifices stand for some reason for our own help. And um, come to the book of Hebrew chapter number 10 verse 4 to 9. Hebrew 10 4 to 9. So you can see that God was tired of all those sacrifices and he won't sin, which is the issue and the problem, to be uprooted so that we can have life of transformation. He desire our transformation. Okay? So, read Hebrew chapter number 10, verse 4 to 9. For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Therefore, when Christ enters into the world, he says, Sacrifice and offering you have not desired, but instead you have prepared a body for me to offer. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you have taken no delight. Then I said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God, to fulfill what is written of me in the scroll of the book. After saying in the citation above, You have neither desired, nor have you taken delight in sacrifices and offerings and whole burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, which are offered according to the law. Then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will. And so he does away with the first covenant as a means of atoning for sin based on animal sacrifices, so that he may inaugurate and establish the second covenant by means of obedience. Amen. Do you understand this scripture alone to tell you that God doesn't need blood? He said, when he came into the world, he says, sacrifices and offering you will not like, but he has prepared a body for him. In pain offering and sacrifices for our sin. Look at verse, he says, in pain offering and sacrifice for sin, you have no pressure in them. So all the blood that were being poured here and there, don't let anybody to tell you God need blood before he, everything on those blood he demanded, it was because of our own help. There is a reason behind that blood being poured. So Jesus said, God has prepared a body for him to come to take away your sin. This is the reason why when John saw him, he said, Behold the Lamb of God who comes to take away a 
our sin so that you will not be doing those sacrifices again so that you will not be doing those kind of sin sacrifices again he came to take away so that he can establish the new which one what is the new the new is the spirit so under the law they were doing sacrifice yearly under grace the body of jesus has consumed your sin once for all time so jesus christ has has come to deal with everyone's sin once and for all time so the sacrifices of sin under grace is jesus christ under grace the sacrifice for sin is jesus christ so that why so that we may receive the spirit of sonship just as isaiah prophesied about so when you read matthew chapter 1 verse 21 he said and the woman shall bring forth a son and the woman will call the son named jesus and what is the purpose of jesus he said for he shall save his people from their sins who are his people his people are the word so the sacrifice of jesus is the end of your sin for all eternity remember the prophecy being spoken in genesis chapter 3 the prophecy says the seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent and last time we saw that the head of the serpent is the seed of the serpent is who sin so jesus did not just come to die for you he came to crash to abort to destroy the sin of the world that's why when you read hebrews i'm uh, sorry Romans chapter number uh, 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 uh romans 8 verse 3 says christ put your sin in his body and he destroyed it so the death of jesus has put an end to sin and this is the reason why today animal sacrifices are not needed why because jesus sacrifice himself for you and he has protect your sin away therefore there is no more sin standing between you and god the reason is because how sin has been explained to you and i was wrong the wrong thing you do are not the sin of the world the sin of the world is greater and bigger than the wrong thing you are doing the wrong thing you are doing can be stopped by renewing your mind that's why paul says be a transformed by doing what renewing your mind it doesn't matter how you go to God and confess to him you are a liar. You will lie and lie and lie again until you renew your mind and get transformed. Because no matter you speak, I am a liar, I can't lie again. You will lie and lie and lie. Because that is not the sin of the world. If lying is the sin of the world, then Jesus died a useless death. If stealing is the sin of the world, then Jesus died a useless death. These things are things in your mind to renew your mind and get rid of so the lamb of god came and took away our sin so whosoever you are you are no longer a sinner because the lamb of god came and took away all sins for you to say thank you jesus your part is to do to your part is to receive this good news of how the lord jesus christ the lamb of god took away your sin and by so doing you will receive the spirit of sonship by faith in the gospel and by renewing your mind you will be transformed into the image of the invisible creator this is the reason why the bible says god is in christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing why because the lamb of god already come came and consumed the sin of the world so the world sin has been consumed and the world has been forgiven where in the blood of jesus in the blood of jesus is where everyone has been forgiven so now we just go to the world and and send that's why they say go and tell the world the good news what is the good news the good news is that a lamb has been offered in that lamb in the lamb your sin has been forgiven in that lamb in that lamb in the blood of the lamb so your sin has been forgiven in the blood and you are not just forgiven but the lamb of god approved sin forever so that you will not continue to be sacrifices sin to be to be to be doing our sin sacrifices year by year he didn't just forgive you 
he took away your sin and that's why that's exactly what uh john 1 29 said when john saw jesus said behold the lamb of god who take away the sin of the world so how did jesus christ take away the sin of the world as john as, as john the baptist prophesied how did he take it jesus took away your sin because he became your sins offering to god he went he was made to be seen for you okay he was made to be seen for you yet he knew no sin and by becoming your sin he was crucified on your behalf so all your lifetime all those and there are some people said jesus uh, forgive our past present and future sin that is nothing but a wrong doctrine it is theology that is not scriptural there is only passing and that passing is what jesus christ came to take away there is no such thing as past, our present and future sin there is only one sin and christ came and took it away you don't have any past present any future present present or future sin that jesus is forgiving every day if you are you are not transformed you are battling with so renew your mind and experience the life of the spirit if you don't there's nothing like jesus is keep on cleaning you every day you need to renew your mind in every area of your life so christ became what was seen now read second corinthians chapter 5 second corinthians chapter 5 21 we, you are going to see how your sin has been destroyed how jesus became remember under the law when the person lay hand on the lamb and then they crucify all this uh they, they slaughter the lamb the person is forgiven and the grace you are not just forgiven your sin has been uprooted for eternity and that's the reason why you are free so in the next teaching i'll teach you why that blood was demanded so read uh second corinthians chapter number five second corinthians 2 5 and uh romans 8 3 so read first second corinthians, second corinthians 5, chapter chapter 5 21 he made Christ, who knew no sin, to judicially be seen on our behalf, so that in him we would become the righteousness of God, that is, we would be made acceptable to him and placed in a right relationship with him by his gracious, loving kindness. Amen. He made Christ to be your sin, who knew no sin, so that by the death of Jesus, you will be free. And today many people are insulting Jesus, thinking they are correcting error. Your sin has been placed on Jesus. Sin is not what you have been taught it is. Sin is not lying. If you don't renew your mind, you continue to lie even after salvation. If you don't renew your mind, you continue to do bad things even after salvation. Because bad thing is a personal will but you know sin is something beyond bad and this is the reason why it kept us captive to the devil it is beyond the physical that's why we were we were had bondage before jesus christ came we were in the belly of the devil which is which is what death which is the grave we were in the grave which is the belly of the devil that is where sin has been placed at it. but the bible said christ has read Sin as why because sin has now been taken now you need to ask yourself question adam sin did adam gossip no did he like no what was his sin his, his his sin was the fact that he disobeyed he broke the law and that sin was the one that was credited to your account and this is the reason why you became a sinner you became a sinner not because of lying. You became a sinner not because of stealing. You became a sinner because of Adam. Stealing, lying, and all those things, they are bad character. They are character that you need to deal with by renewing your mind. But they keep telling you those things are sin, confess it to God. You can see your life is too, the way it is. You are not transformed. They need to tell you the truth that the Lord Jesus has already dealt with sin. Now the remaining word is for you to sit down and renew your mind and to be transformed by the word of God because the lamb of god became sin became your sin and died so imagine lying is sin stealing is sin and all these works of the flesh they call sin imagine all these things are sin then you and i will be a foolish we will be fools to say jesus died 
before are seen when you know these things you are still doing it sin is beyond what you are being taught sin is not what you are being taught and the book of Romans chapter 8 says Jesus put that sin in his flesh and he condemned it and John 3 16 said God so loved you that he gave he gave Jesus Christ to die for you so that you may believe in him and not perish now people are going to perish not because of sin they are going to perish because they refuse to put on life Moses redeemed all the the Israelites from Egypt and the Bible says Egypt symbolize sin but after they cross the Red Sea they must enter into the promised land but entry into the promised land become became a problem and a lot of them were condemned in the wilderness and that's what the word is now the word must enter into the promised land which is faith in Christ to receive life if they don't receive even though Christ Christ has already redeemed everyone from Egypt which symbolizes which means sin but you will die without life So the reason why your sins were all glad is because of the Lamb of God. And the Lamb of God was perfect. Remember what John, 1 John chapter number 2 says? He said, Christ is a perfect man who did just, just open there and read for us. Read, uh, open uh, uh, John, uh, 1 John chapter number 2, verse 2. 1 John 2, 2. Read 1 John 2, 2 for us. Because there are a lot of them who say Christ only didn't die. The, the unbeliever must have said before his sin will be forgiven, which is not scriptural. We are told to go and tell them the good news. We are not told to go and tell them their sinners. The, the blood, the Lamb of God is not for the church. The Lamb of God is for the world. That's what the Bible says. It says, Behold the Lamb of God who came to take away the sin of who? The church? No. The world. The Holy Spirit is here for the church. The Lamb of God came for the world. The Holy Spirit came for the church. So anyone who believes in Christ will receive the Holy Spirit. Anyone who doesn't believe in Christ, even though the Lamb of God came and dealt with his sin, but he still needs the Holy Spirit. So take note, the Spirit of Christ came for the church. The Lamb of God came for the world. Because the world, the Bible says, God so loved the world. That's why he gave the Lamb. God so loved the world. That's why he, uh, he offered the lamb. To who? The world. He didn't offer the lamb for the church because there were no church on the earth. There was no church in, on the earth. The world was on the earth. So God offered his lamb to the world. Why are we trying to steal the message from the world? So the lamb came for the world. The spirit came for the church. So the, the spirit is here because of the church. Why the lamb was here for the world. This is so simple and clear. So read first John 2, 2. And he, that same Jesus, is the propitiation for our sins the atoning sacrifice that holds back the wrath of god that would otherwise be directed at us because of our sinful nature our worldliness our lifestyle and not for ours alone but also for the sins of all believers throughout the world amen which version is that he said for the sin of all believers right yes he said not only for us but for the sin of who all unbelievers King James says, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. What is the problem of others? They say you keep on this, you keep on accusing people for what the Lamb came to do. In fact, John 2 2 probably needs some adjustment here because the the Lamb of God didn't come for the church to die for the sins of the church because there was no church. The Lamb came for the world. Why the Spirit came because of the church? That's why Jesus himself explained it better. He said, I am going and I'm going to send another personality called Holy Spirit. When he comes, the world will not receive him. But you will receive him because you know him. Why? Because you are sent. But Jesus Christ himself also said, My Father has sent me into the world, not to condemn the world, but through me the world might be saved. When you call some people sinners, you are condemning them. That is the language of the devil. That is an accuser. Why? Because the Lamb came because of the world. The Lamb never came because of church, because there was no church. So Jesus, the death, the death of Jesus is not for the church. Is for the world. After we believe, we became church. The man we believe, we become what? Church. We are church of Christ because we believe. 
why he died because of he died we were once unbelievers and he died for but now we are not unbelievers we are believers because we are church we are not we are not the people the lamb came for we are now church at that life we have been translated from that realm we are uh, in a realm whereby we don't have any past history we are new creations so ask yourself question does the lamb die for the new creation? No, the lamb died for the old. So we were translated from the old into the new by receiving the life of Christ. So the lamb died for the world. And the Bible says, you know, in, in, in first Timothy, I think first Timothy chapter number two, verse five says, there is one God and one mediator who is called Jesus, the man Jesus who gave himself himself as a ransom for all to be testified so now you are to send the testimony that jesus has cleared your sin you are sin you have been forgiven in the blood go out the pandemic others because some of them pick sin sin when you preach this some of them will just look at scriptures that talk about sin where will i see sin in the scripture to question this teaching then they'll be they'll be flipping in I want, I'm, I'm looking for sin, sin, sin. Where can I find sin? Just to question truth, reality. Any other things in the Bible after the death of Jesus is an action. To the Jews, anything you do against the law is sin. That why, that's why they put in sin somewhere when you read it. Under the law, when you break a law, John said, sin is breaking of law. That's what John said. Because he, he, he was using Old Testament definition. When you lie, they call you a sin. You sin. But the truth of the episodes of the gospel, the truth of the gospel is that your wrongdoing can be done away by renewing your mind. If you don't renew your mind, you remain like that. So we don't go to God to confess to him about things. Because you go to God, if you think you sin, that God must forgive you, then you need to present a lamb anytime you are going there. Don't go there with an empty word because it is not scriptural. Sin is forgiven only by blood. So if you think Jesus failed to take away your sin and you think you can confess to him to forgive you, then please, anytime you are going, make sure you go there with the lamb. Because he said, if I'm not the one who said, remember the Hebrew we read, he said, without sacrifice of, uh, uh, without blood, there is no forgiveness. That's what the book of Hebrews said. Now read Hebrews chapter 10, 10 to 14. We are almost done. We are almost done then. We are almost done. Then next week, on Wednesday, I will teach you why the blood was commanded. And when your eyes open, then you will begin to thank God from generation when Adam failed. Because like I said, most people feel like God needs blood. He, some, some of them think he drink blood. But I'm telling you, the blood being demanded was for your own good because that's the only possibility. So read Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10 to 14. And in accordance with this will of God, we who believe in the message of salvation have been sanctified, that is, set apart as holy for God and his purposes. Through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed ones for all. Every priest, stands at his altar of service, ministering daily, offering the same sacrifices over and over, which are never able to strip away sins that envelop and cover us. Whereas, whereas Christ, having offered the one sacrifice, the all-sufficient sacrifice of himself, for sins for all time, set down signifying the completion of atonement for sin, at the right hand of God, the position of honor waiting from that time onward until his enemies are made a footstool for his feet for by one offering he has perfected forever and completely cleansed those who are being sanctified bringing each believer to spiritual completion and maturity amen now the reason why i love king james is the fact that king james make it clear the other person trying to make a uh, selfish out of uh, the work of christ that's why they always bring believers there but when you read king james king james service then said by that which we are sanctified through the offering of the body of jesus christ once for all he never identified anyone he said for that by by the 
by the which we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. So now you need to be smart whenever you are reading. You need to ask yourself a question. Who did Jesus offer himself for? Who did Jesus die for? Did he, did he die for church? No. He didn't die for believers. He died for unbelievers. So by the death of Jesus, they are being cleansed from sin. We are new creation. We don't have seen that. We have never been cleansed with blood. We are new creation. We were unbelievers and we were clean by blood. We believed the message and we became we become new creation. And the new creation, uh, the new creation uh, was not cleansed by blood. He is he is bathed by the spirit. He is born by the spirit. He is refreshed by the spirit. He is new by the spirit. Therefore, the new creation does not need sanctification. The new creation is brand new. The new creation is brand new. Last time I said, the new creation is who? Christ. Our new life is Christ. Does Christ need sanctification? Does, does Christ need blood to cleanse himself? No. So the new creation is clean by bed. It is true bed or it is by bed that he is holy, he is clean, he is perfect, he has no uh, problem. The new creation is perfect. So this scripture in Hebrew 10 is, is referring to those Jesus died. That's why I said under the Old Testament, the prince stand daily ministering and offering often time the same sacrifices which Christ did, which can never take away sins. So you can see that their focus is that sin should be taken away. Today, like I tell you, 99% of preachers believe is that sin still stand. It is only the power that Jesus take away, but which is nothing but ignorance. He said, those sacrifices being done under the law could not take it can never take away sin. But John said, the lamb take away sin. This is the reason why sacrifices is not needed anymore. Why? Because the issue, why the, the, the main reason why sacrifices are being made every year by year, that thing has been uprooted. So if that thing has been uprooted, then there is no more sacrifices of sin. This is the reason why death was abolished. The Bible said death is abolished by the gospel. Why did death was abolished? It's because sin, which gave death power to reign, that sin has been captured. And since death has its power through death, and and then sin was destroyed, death couldn't have any power to reign over us again. This is the reason why death lose its power. And when death lose its power, Satan also lose because death couldn't death fail to send us into the realm into the realm of Satan again. Why? because its source who is sin has been destroyed and satan could not have power over us again why because his source also has been destroyed why when death lose when sin was destroyed death lose power and when does look death lose power satan also become aimless remember what the scripture said by one man sin death reign and now since one the jesus christ destroys sin death is abolished this is the reason why Satan is put under your feet. Satan is destroying the world today because of ignorance. They don't know the truth. But the truth of the matter is that his tools has been destroyed. His tools, which is sin and death, has been brutalized by Jesus Christ. And this is the definition of redemption. This is the meaning of Jesus died for me. But like I tell you, majority of saying Jesus died for me. But you ask them, what did he die for? They, they say, no, I'm still sinner. You are just saying something you don't understand, the content. By one man's sacrifice, the death of Jesus has taken away your sin. Today, you are a free person. You have been redeemed. You have been made free to receive the spirit of sonship. You don't have any death of sin on your conscience. If you do, then Jesus died in vain. Then Jesus died just like the lamb, the normal lamb being crucified under the Old uh, Old Testament. If your sins still stand before God, then Jesus is not different from the lamb under the Old. So like I said, you may be living anyhow lifestyle, it is because your mind is not renewed. It's not because you are still a sinner. Remember, when Adam fell, your mind got corrupted. So the mind needs to be renewed back. Any other thing you do is because the mind was corrupted. You learn them here and that's why you do them. 
so if you want to stop doing evil things you need to renew your mind that's how you are going to be transformed because jesus didn't redeem your mind he redeemed you from sin the work of jesus that that redemption is more than how we were taught it it has to do with spiritual stuff he took you from darkness he translated you from darkness so that you can now take remember when adam sinned we were sold to the devil by sin and the prophecy in genesis 3 says the seed of the woman is the only person that can redeem the rest of his seed which has to do with the world so when jesus christ came he came to fulfill the prophecy be prophesied in genesis chapter 3 so he came to bruise the head of the serpent which is which is uh death and sin so that you can be free to receive life sonship that's why galatians chapter chapter 3 14 15 says christ became cursed for us on the cross he became cursed and he redeemed us from the curse of the law you know today that law people think that's the law of moses but that's not the law of moses that's the law being prophesied how we were cursed to submit to the devil so when he he, he, he said he became cursed for us so that he will redeem us from the curse of, from the law so that we may become sons of god so today you are being redeemed from the sin of adam and today you are free you are washed with the blood of jesus the blood of jesus has washed you you are clean to come to partake life if you are not clean yet from sin the spirit of life cannot embrace somebody who is unclean remember adam was not a sinner but adam also needs salvation don't forget that that's why people say oh if you say sin has been brutalized and, and dead then what what is the meaning of salvation the tree of life was in the garden even when adam didn't sin jesus is not plan b jesus is not here because of sin sin was not the one that made jesus to be famous he was the plan a from genesis that's why the tree of life was placed there so even adam whether sin or no sin he needs to receive that tree of life but when he sinned what happened he was chased out from the from the life and God said, I will not allow him to partake life and live forever. So the cure of death is that tree of life. And Adam needs to receive that life. So you see, we were kicked out from life. And that's why eternal life, eternal life has been hindered from the time of Adam to the time of Moses because of sin. Sin has to be dealt with first. For the door to be open so you see when they were chasing out you can see that the bible said god put place and angels there to guide that tree of life why because man was made sin so god cannot allow a sinner to partake the tree of life so he kicked him out and tell him that until i deal with sin there is no way onto the tree of life so now he has dealt with our sin and he opened the way of eternal life for you to just come in and receive because right now you are sinless but lifeless do you understand so sin is not the motivation behind salvation salvation is there long before sin came that's why the bible said by one man by one man disobedience sin came into the world sin is not something god is using to motivate us to receive salvation Salvation is there before Adam's sin. Salvation, receiving eternal life is there in the garden before the fall, the fall of man. The fall of man only hinder us. It only pr prolongs the term. But today I am here to tell you that the Lord Jesus has already dealt with your sin and you have been cleansed, you have been redeemed, you are a free person. Go to the Father with the consciousness that Jesus dealt with your sin go to the father with that boldness filled with grace and go and receive life the father is not condemning you but whatsoever you are doing all you need is renewing of mind sit down and renew your mind and all those things you are battling we will just wash away but i'm telling you the father has no issue with you he has already destroyed jesus because of you that's why the bible says god is in christ reconciling you unto himself it's not against you not imputing anything anything you call sin is not imputing unto you it is your own consciousness and wrong doctrine doctrine that are, 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 are beating you down but the father has no issue with you the sin issue has been dealt with you are a free person today go to the father with boldness with your misery or whatever you are battling with and receive 
receive, receive. But ignorance, pride, and wrong knowledge will make you feel like God hates you, that you are not of God, that you are a bad person, that you are a sinner. If you call yourself a sinner, then Jesus died in vain. He died a useless death. So I'm here to tell you that sin has been crucified and you are being sanctified forever. And if you have never received the life of Christ, open up yourself to receive the life of Christ because he crucified himself for you to receive the spirit. The key focus is to receive the spirit so that you can have the eternal living. And today Jesus Christ has already dealt with your sin and you are not a sinner. If you don't have Christ, you are a human, a free person. A sinner is somebody who is... A, who is under the control of the devil a sinner is somebody who has been locked in the darkness of the devil a sinner is somebody who is still under the dominion of the devil a sinner is somebody who is still under the grave of bondage but what is does the scripture say the scripture says in the book of hebrew chapter 2 13 and 14 that jesus crucified jesus destroyed the devil and he redeemed us from death that all the days of our life we were fearing death he took us from that realm of death who did he die for the world and he redeemed the world from such realm for us to come into the realm of light to receive life today god has nothing against you come to god and receive life and renew your mind and you'll be transformed you are a free person now and this is what you should know so i'll end today's meeting here and part two of this meeting I will tell you why those blood were sacrificed. Why those blood were poured on altars. Why those blood were needed. What was the secret? Who was behind it? Who was the blood for? And then your eye will open. But I can tell you that don't let anybody lie to you that God forgives sin just by you going to say, you see, Father, I'm so sorry. You know, last time I fornicate and I'm so sorry. I will not do that again. That is just an empty word. You go back and do it again and again and again until you understand that Jesus worked for you and all it takes is for you to, to, to discipline yourself with the word of God by renewing your mind and stop the, uh, the life you are living. God cannot take fornication away from you. God cannot take stop you from gossiping. God cannot stop you. It is only when you sit down and renew your mind until the word transform you. You keep on repeating it and repeating it and you keep on going to God and begging and begging and you remain. And that's why people get frustrated and say, you know, I've become a Christian and I've never changed. There's nothing. I'm still confessing to God and I'm still repeating the same thing. You know why? Because what you are doing is in your soul. Your soul is corrupted, so you need to renew it back. If you want to understand how to train the soul, I have a teaching called Schooling the Soul on YouTube. You can read about that, but don't let anybody tell you that the more you confess your sin to God and the more you pray, then you be, you begin to change. It's all religion and superstition, and it doesn't change anybody's life. You remain the same miserable person until you understand that I am not a sinner and everything I am doing, I'm doing because my mind is not renewed and your eyes open you continue to battle with the same issue and i'm telling you all of us who have been there until god taught us right until you see what jesus did for you and you see you know the moment you call yourself you are a sinner and that's why you do those things the devil have dominion because now you place yourself back into his control because he needs sin to control you so the moment you call yourself a sinner you have given him that power to enslave you back again but the moment your eyes open i am not that person again jesus has that for me and all it takes is for me to spend time with the word and renew my mind you have power over the devil he loses power over you so if you think you are a sinner you continue to be a miserable person because that's gave the devil power over you but i'm here to tell you jesus has already dealt with it and now you can say just open your mouth and thank him thank you lord for everything you have done for me he died for you he didn't die for himself he didn't die, just die for you. He had protected your sin. Today, you are a blameless person before God. But if you don't have Christ, you are lifeless. So go to your father with the boldness. Whatever battle you are battle, addition, go to him. Don't be prideful. It is pride to think, oh, I'm too dirty to go to God. You are full of pride. As if you can claim yourself. Go to him. Any question?